Thing. Now it's time to talk the world of chips and particularly some of these tech names that are seeing quite different performance today, at least in terms of the two topics we're discussing. So here to break down Texas Instruments for us as well as ARM, Qualcomm, I'd like to welcome in Kevin Green, Senior Markets Correspondent. So Kevin, maybe we'll start off with the good news here, and that's Texas Instruments, which is, I mean, I, from what I can tell, maybe just the fact that this company was able to to beat, I mean, it's a relatively, I'd say not high bar, but mid-set bar and issue some overall guide that was not necessarily as perhaps conservative as the street have been bracing for. I mean, it's a mystery to me, actually, how this name's been able to hold on to a nice gain on the session. Well, Jenny, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think it's some of the commentary from their leadership, which kind of highlighted that they believe that the, uh, the inventory cycle or the gluts that they have seen over the last year, year and a half may be abating here. And they are very optimistic over the next six months that demand actually could be ramping up for some of their products. Now, we have seen Texas Instrument uh, uh, have some issues when it comes to the automotive and the industrial space. There's still uh, a lack of demand there. But once again, their commentary on the conference call, I think, really drove this home to the upside. Now, revenue did come in at around 4. One five billion dollars. That was down around eight percent on a year-over-year -year basis, but it did exceed the street's expectations. And when you're looking at their guidance moving forward, uh, the revenue guide actually came up a little bit short. They're looking at three point seven billion to four billion dollars with the revenue for Q4. She was looking for four point zero six billion, and the adjusted earnings per share came in also below the street's expectations at a dollar and seven cents to a dollar twenty-nine cents is their guide. The expectation was a dollar and thirty-four cents. But once again, I think it's the commentary on the call. And Texas Instruments has made some pretty monumental adjustments when it comes to their capex spend and their expansion strategy moving forward here that has been a bright spot for them because a lot of investors were concerned uh, that they were spending a lot of money on new factories and fabs and things of that nature but uh, unfortunately uh, they just were not seeing the demand there so i think it's uh, that's also another factor probably as to why we're seeing the stock up on the session here today yeah, kind of a disappointing guide. You initially saw the stock lower, and then it kind of bounces back. Of course, it was weak into earnings as well. One of its sort of peers in the space had kind of strong earnings, strong guide, and then it's lower in the case of Seagate. But talk to me about this uh, ARM Qualcomm. What I'm going to describe is sort of a high-stakes game of chicken at the moment here, uh, Kev, is uh, it seems that uh, – one of, the, one of the sides is wanting to take their ball and go home, uh, and it's sort of leading to a lose-lose reaction in both stocks. Yeah, it does appear that ARM is uh, really trying to uh, exert some leverage here when it comes to their licensing agreement with Qualcomm. Now, this is actually due to an acquisition that occurred around two, uh, 2021, where they uh, Qualcomm acquired Nuvia, and they never readjusted the licensing agreement, and Qualcomm has been uh, creating these chips using the ARM uh, infrastructure, and now ARM is coming back and saying, well, because of that acquisition, you have to now uh, renegotiate the licensing contract. So this is going to be a back and forth. This will be a, a drawn out legal battle, but it does appear uh, from the, the looks of it that ARM's really trying to put some pricing pressure uh, on this licensing agreement for Qualcomm, knowing that if they're not able to create these uh, chips uh, based on this infrastructure, uh, that it would actually have a meaningful impact on the top line when it comes to Qualcomm. So, so both of those companies right now feeling the pain when it comes to the stock price today. But this is going to be a story that's probably going to last for a fairly long time. And Qualcomm has had these type of issues before with other companies, and uh, they're not really known for really bowing down to these type of disputes. Okay, so I'm curious then, I mean, why are we seeing more of an impact today to ARM? I mean, is this because of, I mean, like just like the overall story we got today that ARM is canceling this licensing agreement? Or why is ARM taking just a bit more of a hit today in your opinion? I think it's more, uh, well, there's a couple of things. One, I think it's just valuation. Uh, it's still a, a relatively expensive stock. Now, a lot of their uh, revenue it comes from these licensing agreements. And when you're looking at their guidance moving forward, it's really hard to really pinpoint what they're going to generate as far as sales or revenue for a particular quarter. So I think the market's probably also looking at this and saying, okay, if there is a stoppage in the next 60 to 90 days, uh, what's the impact going to be for their earnings uh, for, the, for the upcoming quarter? I think that's a, a concern for them. And then also, once again, I think it's, uh, ARM is just relatively expensive. So I think the market's going to also take that into account. And this is a name that when semis sell off, ARM tends to sell off a little bit more aggressively. Uh, and when semis, you know, get a little bit of a bid arm once again outperforms to the upside so higher beta name and i think that's an, uh, the one of the big reasons why we're seeing the, the stock down you know, a little bit more aggressively than qualcomm right now
Kevin, OU has got one eye on the overall market, selling accelerating here a little bit, back testing the uh, one month uh, EMA in the S&P 500, slicing through some of those levels that one might have thought would be significant. Let's call 5,800 a big round number. Um, what, what's going on here in the kind of flow universe? Yeah, well, everything has been uh, bearish when it comes to flows. Now, uh, if you're looking at the top tick uh, contract on the put side, the 5770s are getting a lot of attention. So we're, we're pretty much close to that, that strike price right now. Um, and if you're looking at gamma levels, 5775 is your actually your, your negative gamma area. So you want to see some dealers actually buying uh, at that level. And if not, Alex, if we do break through that um, aggressively, uh, we could actually have a pretty aggressive move to the downside uh, for the close. So that's the 5775 is the level to hold. And if it doesn't, I think we probably will have a bigger conversation about a meaningful pullback in the S&P 500 here. Yeah, and I will say some of this pressure is starting to pick up here ever so slightly with, I mean, the NASDAQ. s and is now down 1.2%, NASDAQ down 1.8%, but we'll leave it there. Great breakdown and great insight into the overall chip in, in semiconductor world. Kevin Green, Senior Markets Correspondent for the Network.